In lesson 8.3, you will graph general rational functions. And the first function that we're going to graph is y equals x over x squared plus 1. To graph that function, we find a vertical asymptote by setting the denominator equal to 0 and solving for x. But when I get x squared alone, I have negative 1 on the right hand side, and when I try to solve for just x by taking the square root of both sides, I find I can't take the square root of a negative number in our real system, so there's no vertical asymptote. And then I'll check for horizontal asymptotes by comparing the degrees of the polynomials top and bottom. The degree of the top polynomial is 1 since we have x to the first power, and in the denominator, the degree of our polynomial is 2, since we have x squared. Since the degree of the top is less than the degree of the bottom, the x-axis is our horizontal asymptote, or y equals 0. And now when we make a table of values, we can choose values for x that are negative, 0, and positive near the origin, we don't have to worry about a, a vertical asymptote. So now when I find my y values, I'll put negative 2 in for x, so I have negative 2 in the numerator. In the denominator, I have negative 2 squared, which is 4, and 4 plus 1 is 5, so I get negative 2 fifths. When I put negative 1 in for x, I have negative 1 in the numerator, and in the denominator, negative 1 squared is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2, so I get negative 1 half for a y value. When I put 0 in for x, 0 in the numerator uh, divided by whatever in the denominator is going to give me 0 for a y value. Now I'll put 1 in for x, so I have 1 in the numerator, and 1 squared in the denominator is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2, so I'm getting 1 half for a y value. And now 2 in for x gives me 2 in the numerator, 2 squared in the denominator is 4, and 4 plus 1 is 5. So I'll get 2 fifths for a y value. So now I'll graph those ordered pairs. Negative 2, negative 2 fifths, and negative 1, negative 1 half, 0, 0, the origin, positive 1, 1 half, and positive 2, 2 fifths. So this curve follows the horizontal asymptote from the left, falls through the points that we graphed, then comes up and crosses the uh, horizontal asymptote at the origin, reaches a high point, and then comes back down and follows the asymptote to the right. So the domain for this rational function is all reals. x can be any real number because there's no vertical asymptote to restrict it. Okay, the range, however, is caught between negative one-half and positive one-half. So the range is negative 1 half is less than or equal to y, and y is less than or equal to positive 1 half. Okay, here we have another rational function to graph, y equals x squared over x squared minus 1. So we'll find vertical asymptotes again by setting that denominator equal to x and solving for uh, setting it equal to 0 and solving for x, so we get x squared is equal to 1, and taking the square root of both sides, I'm getting x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1, which is 1. So I have two vertical asymptotes, x equals negative 1, and x equals positive 1. And now we'll check for horizontal asymptotes by comparing those degrees of the polynomials, top and bottom. The degree of the top polynomial is 2, since we have x squared, and the degree of the bottom polynomial is also 2, since we have x squared. Since they're equal, the horizontal asymptote is going to be of the form y equals a over b, where a is the leading coefficient of the top polynomial, and since it's 1x squared, the leading coefficient is 1, and b is the leading coefficient of the bottom polynomial, and since that's 1x squared, our leading coefficient is 1. So our horizontal asymptote is y equals 1. So I'll sketch that on our graph, the horizontal line that crosses the y-axis at 1. 
Okay, so now when we make our table of values for this rational function, when we choose values for x, we'll choose values left of that vertical first vertical asymptote. I'm going to choose negative 3 and negative 2. And then I'll choose values in between the two vertical asymptotes. So I'm going to choose negative 1 half, 0, and positive 1 half. And then to the right of that second vertical asymptote, I can choose 2 and 3. Okay, and we'll get our y values. When I let x equal negative 3, I have negative 3 squared or 9 in the numerator. I have negative 3 squared, which is 9, 9 minus 1 in the denominator, or 8. So I get 9 eighths for a y value. Negative 2 squared in the numerator is 4. Negative 2 squared in the denominator is 4, and 4 minus 1 is 3. So I'm getting positive 4 thirds. When I let negative uh, x equal negative 1 half, I have negative 1 half squared in the top, which is 1 fourth. And in the bottom, I have negative 1 half squared, which is 1 fourth. And 1 fourth minus 1 is negative 3 fourths. But we don't divide by a fraction. We multiply by its reciprocal instead. So when I multiply that numerator by negative 4 thirds, 4's are going to cancel and I'm going to get negative 1 third for a y value. Okay, now when I let x equal 0, 0 squared in the top is 0 and 0 divided by anything is 0. When I let x equal positive 1 half, I'm getting the same value here because positive 1 half squared is 1 fourth and uh, positive 1 half squared is 1 fourth. 1 fourth minus 1 in the denominator is negative 3 fourths. So I'm getting that same value of negative 1 third. Okay, now when I let x equal 2, I have 2 squared in the numerator. That's 4. In the denominator, I have 2 squared, which is 4, and 4 minus 1, so I'm getting 4 thirds again. And same with 3. 3 squared in the top is 9. In the bottom, 3 squared is 9, and 9 minus 1 is 8. So now I'll graph these ordered pairs. I'll graph negative 3, 9 eighths, which is 1 and 1 eighth, close to the horizontal asymptote. And I'll graph negative 2, 4 thirds. That's 1 and 1 third, so a little further from the asymptote. And now I can draw the curve in this area. It's going to follow the asymptotes and take a turn through the points that we graphed. Now between the vertical asymptotes, we're graphing negative 1 half, negative 1 third, and we're graphing the origin, 0, 0, and we're graphing positive 1 half, negative 1 third. Okay, so this curve is going to follow the vertical asymptotes from below turn through those points and follow that vertical asymptote on the right. Okay, to the right of the second vertical asymptote, I'm graphing two four-thirds, one and one-third, and then I'm graphing three nine-eighths, or one and one-eighth. So this branch follows that vertical asymptote, comes down and turns through those points, and then follows the horizontal asymptote off to the right. So there's three pieces to this rational function. The domain for this function is restricted. x cannot equal positive or negative 1 because those are the values that make the denominator 0, and that's where we find our vertical asymptotes. The range y cannot equal 1 because that's where we find our horizontal asymptote, and we'll never get a y value of 1 for this function. Okay, one more graph. y equals x squared minus 3x minus 4 over x minus 2. So we'll look for vertical asymptote by setting that denominator x minus 2 equal to 0 and solving for x. So we get x equals 2 for a vertical asymptote. Okay, and then we'll check for horizontal asymptote by comparing those degrees. The degree of the top polynomial, since we have x squared, is 2. The degree of the bottom polynomial, since we have x to the first power, is 1. Since the degree of the top is 1 more than the degree of the bottom, we have no horizontal asymptote, but we do have a slant asymptote to find. And that slant asymptote we find by dividing that top polynomial, p of x, by the bottom polynomial, q of x. We use long division. So when we use long division, we ask ourselves, what do we multiply to x to get x squared? And that's going to be x, so we put that in the quotient and distribute. x times x is x squared, and x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Now we don't subtract in algebra, 
we change the signs and add. So the first column sums to 0, and then the second column we have negative 3x plus 2x. That's negative x minus 4, and we go again. What do we multiply to x? Get negative x. Well, that would be negative 1. So we distribute. Negative 1 times x is negative x, and negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. Now we change the signs and add again so that we have 0 in the first column. Negative 4 and negative 2 is negative 6 in the second column, but we don't care about the remainder for our slant asymptote. Our slant asymptote is this slanted line, y equals x minus 1. That's a slanted line in slope-intercept form, so we can graph using the y-intercept of negative 1 and the slope of positive 1. So we'll go up 1 to the right 1, up 1 to the right 1 as many times as we need to, and once we have enough points, then we can sketch our slant asymptote through those points. And make our table of values. So we need values to the left of that vertical asymptote, and I'm going to choose negative 1, 0, and 1. And to the right of that vertical asymptote, I can choose 3, 4, and 5. Okay, and now solve for y. So when we put negative 1 in for x, we have negative 1 squared, which is 1, and negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3 minus 4, but that value is 0, and 0 divided by anything is going to give us 0 for a y value. Now when I put 0 in, all I have left in the numerator is negative 4, and in the denominator, 0 minus 2 is negative 2, so negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2 for a y value. Putting 1 in for x, we have 1 squared, which is 1. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3, minus 4. And in the denominator, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So it looks like I'm getting negative 6 in the top, divided by negative 1 in the bottom, or just 6 for a y value. Put 3 in for x, so that we have 3 squared, which is 9. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, minus 4 over 3 minus 2, which is 1. So those are sum to 0, so I'm just left with negative 4 for a y value. And now negative 4 squared is 16. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12 minus 4. Well, that sums to 0 again, and 0 divided by anything is 0. So we get 0 for a y value. 5 squared is 25. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15 minus 4 over 5 minus 2, which is 3. So simplifying in the numerator, I have 10 minus 4, or 6, over 3, which is going to give me 2 for a y value. And we'll graph negative 1, 0. We'll graph 0, 2, a y-intercept. We'll graph 1, 6. And we'll draw the curve to the right, or to the left of that vertical asymptote following our slant asymptote, going through those points that we graphed, and then following the vertical asymptote. Okay, to the right of the vertical asymptote, we're graphing 3, negative 4. We're graphing 4, 0, an x-intercept. We're graphing 5, 2. And we're drawing our branch, following our vertical asymptote, turning through those points, and then following the slant asymptote. So the domain for this rational function is all x not equal to 2, because that's where we find our vertical asymptote, and that's the value that makes our denominator 0. Our range is all y, all reals. y is all reals. We will get any real number for a y value, because there is no horizontal asymptote. Okay, and include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 1, 2, and 4 on page 567 of your textbook.